A week now since the shocking revelations of the large-scale child abuse in Rotherham came to light. The whole scandal is still shrouded in a fog of secrecy. It's mainly by men from the town's Pakistani community, a community where any hint of abuse was routinely underreported. Surrounded by a culture of silence, she was just 10. She later overcame her family's reluctance to take her abuser to court and saw him jailed. Actually, when you look at the Rotherham report, Professor Jay did actually take notice of the fact that there was this huge underreporting that was going on of abuse within Pakistani communities. In fact, local women were actually reporting the fact that there were abusers and gangs that were waiting for Pakistani heritage girls outside their schools. Um, she cites the fact that the UK Muslim Women's Network actually has a report on grooming and prostitution of Muslim women that went on all over the UK. And the cases there were incredibly brutal. These women were raped, they were burnt with cigarettes, they had the same kind of abuse that the girls in Rotherham had. And so. It's just this massive underreporting that's going on with Pakistani victims. But if I'd lived within that community knowing that they were going to shun me, that they were going to blame me, they were going to say that I was a liar. And in many ways represent exactly what is going on in that British Pakistani community, that there is this utter reluctance to confront what is clearly obviously going on. Bring the perpetrators to justice because that's absolutely essential. Exactly. Now, new evidence has come to light suggesting that South Yorkshire police may not simply have turned a blind eye to child sexual exploitation in the town. We've been told how some officers not only failed to take victims seriously, but actively tried to prevent any chance of justice being done. In one case, the victim says a police officer ripped up her evidence statements before dropping her off at her abuser's business. <laughs> In another, two officers persuaded the victim to withdraw her allegations. Two CID men came to take a statement. She gave a statement to the best of her knowledge. They were trying to dissuade her from making this statement by saying that the police surgeon was coming down the motorway to examine her and it was all going to spoil his Sunday afternoon with his family. And did she still want to go through with this statement? They kept going on and on at her till she said, no, I don't want to do it anymore. Julie took her daughter home. 35 minutes later, the house phone rang. It was the sister from the A&E department asking where we were. And I said my daughter didn't want to go through with it because of the police surgeon coming down the motorway. She said, I don't know what you're talking about because there's no police officer coming down the motorway. Our own doctor was going to examine her. So as far as you're concerned, your daughter was raped. Yeah. You reported it to the police. Yes. And then two CID officers persuaded a 13-year-old child to drop the rape accusation. Yeah. How is that an appropriate way to deal with a, a girl who is under the age of 16 who is complaining of rape? It's beggar's belief. Why would they want to allow criminals to get away with rape? South Yorkshire Police tell us that this incident has been referred to the Independent Police Complaints Commission, but they are awaiting further information from the victim's lawyers. They also point out that all frontline officers and specialist staff have now received training in child sexual exploitation. The Prime Minister and the Home Secretary and the Welsh Assembly have promised not to leave no stones unturned and, and that I'm quite hopeful. Bill Britton, we've had dozens of police investigations, more than a dozen council inquiries, the, Ward, the Wardhouse report, all of these inquiries and yet so few convictions. Why do you think that is? quite properly to have an outside force investigation and that's been called for as I understand it. I think it's very important that right up front everyone is, is required to declare whether they have been or currently are a, a mason. The masons are uh, an avenue that needs to be investigated? Masons definitely need to be investigated. Rotherham is a town steeped in regret. Everyone it seems is sorry. Sorry about the sheer scale of abuse and sorry too about the enormity of the failings which allowed it to continue.
Vanessa's daughter Claire was just 12 when she began being abused by a group of Asian men. Vanessa put her into local authority care, but it just got worse. But when you went to social services, presumably, and said to them, look, this is what's happening, what was their response to you? They were looking at me. They weren't looking at what I was telling them. When you say sorry isn't enough, what do you want the authorities involved to do, the police, the council? To step up, but these people that were in authority and all that, like when all this is about, was going off and still going off, they need to lose their jobs. They need to step down. Yesterday, as the damning report was published, the council leader, Roger Stone, did resign. But what of the many others involved? So what has happened to the senior staff who the report says ignored or chose not to see what was happening to the children in their care? We asked the borough council and they told us the management who were in place throughout the period have moved on. But they also said, we don't know where. Much of the focus today has been on this man, now South Yorkshire's police and crime commissioner. But for five years, from 2005, he was the head of children's services on Rotherham Borough Council. What I'm uh, incredibly uh, sorry about is that so many young people have been let down by the various agencies. But agencies, we're talking about individuals here, and you were one of those individuals. Well, what the report clearly identifies is that there was systemic failure by Rotherham Council, by the NHS, and by South Yorkshire Police. Yes, but and forgive me, sorry, but the cli they're cliches, aren't they, about systemic failures and services? Individuals the, the have to take responsibility. The, you were head of children's well, of services. Of course, I did take responsibility. I stood down in 2000. After five years. Well, the, the service was rated as a good service until 2009. Should you resign today? What, what Many the, victims think you should. What the report very clearly says is that, and this is recognised in the report very explicitly, is that at every stage that a report was brought to my attention, appropriate action, appropriate decisions were made. By early evening, the pressure on Mr Wright grew with this from the Home Secretary. Well, Sean Wright obviously has had an involvement in this, both as his role as a councillor and obviously he's now the Police and Crime Commissioner. It's not my job as Home Secretary to hire and fire Police and Crime Commissioners. The whole point of them is that they're elected by the people, so ultimately it is a choice for the electorate. Uh, but I believe his own party, the Labour Party, have called for him to resign. I think he has real questions to answer. And I think in these circumstances, he should heed those calls. For the 1,400 victims and their families, yesterday's report is long overdue. But many are grateful simply because it confirms two brutal truths they've known all along. Why do you think they didn't care enough? Because they thought they were dirty little slags. <laughs> Deserved everything that they they got. Please. Please. Finally, the victims of child abuse in Rotherham and their families have their voices heard, and their moment with the man they feel failed them. Oh. While my granddaughter was charged with drunk disorderly at 12 years old and four men were allowed to walk free. Why? You were a disgrace, mate. And if I had a, honest, if I had a gun in her, I'd shoot you. Despite a vote of no confidence, he remained defiant. My belief is that everyone... Uh, share some responsibility for keeping children and young people safe. It takes a community to raise a child and it takes a community to safeguard and look after the interests of a child. And I believe that everyone that's been involved in delivering those services, either locally or nationally, at whatever tier in government that they are, need to search their own consciences and answer to their own. 
an answer to their own actions during that period in office. Please, please. Mr Wright, do you really think you should stay in this job? Do you really think you're the right man to continue in this role? What do you say to the victims? Outside, though, he was silent. It angered many, but surprised few, to hear him acknowledge that child sexual exploitation is still taking place on an industrial level. Only now is Holly realising what was happening to her. It's disgusting. And do you think it is still a problem here? Yeah. The police aren't around that much. They don't say everything. One woman who worked at a children's home told Channel 4 News that she felt powerless as girls were picked up on a nightly basis. They were 13, 14, 15-year-old girls. The men were late 20s, maybe early 30s. It was just disgusting. It was heartbreaking to see them leaving the house with the men, blatantly waiting for them outside, knowing there was nothing you could do, apart from phoning the police, which you knew nothing really happened. And what did the police say when they arrived? When the police came, they basically said that their hands were tied because there didn't seem to be any crime. And from what I know, the home did have lots of information on the men who were coming, the cars and where they worked and bits of details about them which had been passed on to the police, but it just wasn't acted on by the police. Instead, she says, the girls were simply registered as missing persons until the next night. What was the tipping point for you wanting to leave your job? It was just the sheer frustration of seeing this happening every night seeing the effects it had on these girls. Witnessing one of the nights, a young girl in the bathroom coming out and she'd cut her arm because she was in that much of a mess. Um.